So I want to discuss the uh, visual order way of working today. And uh, it's uh, by way of um, sort of being brought to my attention, I should say, by way of the intensives. Uh, I try to do these immersion um, uh, intensives where I try to get people to be fully walk over into this other way of working and thinking. And uh, so I'm always looking for ways to sort of summarize better what we're talking about. And uh, I'm just going to run through this with you a little bit and just try to get one little idea across, and that is the idea of the visual. So I refer to this, as you know, as the visual order way of working. But um, uh, but it comes from your questions like this. When you, when you look at nature, what do you see? Do you see with your eyes? Or do you see ideas about things that people have told you, perhaps? There are things that you've learned over time. Do you see trees, uh, skies, apples, plates? Uh, do you see anatomy? Um, but when you look out, when you look out of your eyes, <laughs> and ex uh, ex excluding what you know, what do you see now? Now that's in the class of the naive eye, you know, the innocent eye. The innocent of knowing, that's what it is. That's what that means. And that, of course, that, that conversation comes around Monet, but it's bigger than Monet, and it was before Monet. Now, I don't know that he ever even used an expression. Well, he did use the idea of the uh, naive eye. Yes, he did. Anyway, but anyway, you, what you see is you see the visual elements, right? All that's left for you to see is colors and values. And the various sizes of these things in relation to each other. And their locations in your viewfinder, you know. Uh, so there, there, there are those simple numbers of things, primarily values. And, and color values is the way we think of it, but that complexifies it. You could say color and mean values uh, because it is a portion of the values of the color thing. And I prefer to rather think that way. But um, but tones, you know, is all you can see. And I say tones, it's the same word as values, except values has this quality of being sounding like it's grading. So when you're grading your tones, you're evaluating them. <laughs> it's very, the language is very difficult that way, but it's, I couldn't get tone to sound like variations or like adjustment thing, whereas values, it sounds like you're going up and down in a scale. Um, and, um, but that's very much what you're doing. So you, you, you name all these things, and you're, now you're collating them. You're, 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 you're um, uh, well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me actually make a different point, and then I'll get back to that. Uh, you can see these things meeting each other abruptly in some places um, with varying degrees of contrast, right? Value, we're talking about value units now, and varying degrees of sharpness of edge, right? That is the joint where they meet, where two, dark, two different values meet, my hand meeting the background. Um, and you can see that they get to your eyes at different rates. Some of, these, some of these contrasts really shoot to your eye, and other ones are way back. High contrast, sharp-edged sharp uh, units come to your eye. Low contrast, soft-edged ones recede. You can feel the difference. It, it creates a sense of the spatial, doesn't it? Not that you should buy into that in a simplistic way. Um, so, um, and then so what happens where value units meet? There are edge shifts, so we're talking about that. But there's so many edge shifts, uh, you know, along a, a thing like this. There's lost ones, more found ones. There's a the stronger light effects and more projectiveness to your eye right along the same arm that's sitting at this distance. <laughs> and uh, so... But I'm telling you, these are the kinds of things we do, right? Uh, all a painter can put down on canvas with pigment are units of values and colors. And their, and, their, and their actual size and shape and value relationships, right? So, um, so the painter will have chosen some areas of his vision to paint, some, some, some area, some unit, some, he'll have chosen some, some section, some, something to look at. Uh, and um, based on his overall abstract beauty, right? And he'll pursue the relationships of the visual data on his canvas until that beauty begins to shine through.
He'll note the relatively greater projectiveness to the eyes I've mentioned before. He'll notice the highly saturated tones moving toward the eye at different rates from the less saturated. Uh, and the same thing, by the way, with the warmness and coolness factor of color. Uh, and, um, and, he's, you know, and, he's, and he's going to try to articulate the relationship to these things to produce the same effect on the eye that it has. Um, so for you, but, oops, oh, you can't see that anyway. <laughs> I'm about to come to an image and I haven't done it yet. So, but that and similar purely visual data and it's collating to conform to this big impression, to this whole general impression is what Paincraft actually reduces down to. And so that's what I'm offering you. That's what I'm saying. We're not actually drawing people. So I want you to look at some images with me and see how we play with these things. See if you can sort of get an inkling. And I think some of you already have a very strong inkling of this. So I don't mean to make a ton of it. So let me just go through these rather quickly. Hopefully quickly. <laughs> now I'm showing you this one, uh, something we've used on our Instagram uh, thing. Um, and I want you to test, just take a look at this thing and how, you, how would you think of it, right? So if you look at this thing and you see a cast, you're already in trouble, right? Now, it's okay for you to acknowledge there's a cast there. Excuse me. So it's all right for you to, to acknowledge that there's a cast there. But um, um, it's not going to help you all that much. What I want you to notice, though, when you start looking at these things is... For example, what's the darkest dark? Is this the darkest dark? And in general, what are the major masses of values? This is the kind of thinking we go through, right? So there's this major mass of light here, this major mass. This picture rather divides simply, right? You could argue simply into two big masses. This one about two thirds the size of the other one, right? And it does it with a rather a soft edge, right? Uh, it, this dark has fingers that go up into here, these dark fingers. See this dark finger that goes up into here you, and, and, and this finger that goes up into here. So there's variations along this edge. You could argue that the edge goes up like this and does this, goes over like this and does some stuff here, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if you follow that, you're following a, a general visual thing, right? So notice that what you don't want to do is be looking at it and, say, and seeing muscle on that shoulder. I mean, there's no way, there's no way to get anywhere with that. But you do want to notice, for example, the relative color differences. You got the, so you got the big value differences. You want to notice things like your lightest light. Maybe it's this or this, but you're setting these tones out there. You're setting there. And I'm, I'm going to show you examples. And in fact, the last video will, is full of examples like that when we talk about constable and that other way of working. So we set these notes out here, float them out here, actually, in relation to other notes like this. So there's the lightest lights and there's some next tones and then there's some tones that are rather like each other in value but not like each other in color. And we're setting out the darkest darks and we're getting the major mass of this to be majorly different from the mass of this. And we are uh, uh, differentiating the major colors from the major colors. So it's all in the category. For us, it's always in the category of the majors and the most significant things versus the minors and the least significant. So anything inside here is relatively minor. You would do it far later in the picture. You would hardly do any work in here at all. Uh, as you see, if you blur your eyes, you'll see who the prominent dominant players are, right? And it's all in this area here, plus this, right? So your work is gonna be in along here, and it's gonna be in establishing these things as points because they're the unique irregularity, shall we say, on what would otherwise be a flat screen. But they're just value blobs, right? This one you can see, if you, look at, if you compare the two, this one seems to have a little more warmness, a little more richness than this one over here. They're not too dissimilar in value, uh, maybe not dissimilar at all. Uh, and, um, and as you're going along, you'll be wanting to set up, for example, the top and bottom of the page. So you'll probably decide something like, well, why don't we just get this thing in place? Let's say we're using this frame here as the frame of our picture as our, through our viewfinder. Um, and uh, so you can establish things like that. Establish the location of this. That's just above halfway. Establish the location of this. That's something less than thirds, but not a quarter. Establish the location of these. This will help you with your execution. And establish the location of this blob, rather. I don't say establish it, meaning draw things in it, but place it about 
where it belongs, right? And uh, so this is the kind of stuff you're going to be thinking about. You're going to be thinking about value units and placing them. Value units, adjusting them to each other by color, by value, getting them into a set, right? Collating them to each other and adjusting them until they work, as, until the set is right, right? And at some point, pulling off some significant, you know, the most significant sharp-edged drawing, the, the, the strongest effects, wherever they turn out to be, right? Could be any number of places. Could be here, for example. Uh, now, let's just go to another one. I'm, I'm going too far into this one, but that's, that's what, you're not seeing this as a guy anymore, right? You're not seeing this as a, a sculpture anymore. You're not seeing this as a soldier. You're not seeing this as an antique piece of, you know, anything, the Parthenon. Now, the same thing is going to apply here, and I'll show you a start in a second. But if, this, if you're looking at this picture, the first thing you're going to do to begin to collate this data is you're going to blow your eyes, because you want to blow your eyes to find out what units tend to stay together. What you'll find is this whole thing over here tends to stay together, that this part here and this, and some of that, these spots, this stuff starts separating from all these things. You'll notice that the lightest lights seem to be in this area here, and these, these are sort of coincident with them, that the next level of values is this group here, and the third level of values is this, right? Those are the kinds of things you're going to notice, okay? You're going to notice the general color of the picture, and when you're putting these notes down, you're going to, this gold is going to be significant. You're going to have to set it there. This one is more rich than that one. You're going to have to adjust it to that one. As you're just placing notes around on the canvas, if you're like an Impressionist, but you're not sitting there with a mind of, um, of hat. You don't say hat or anything like that. That doesn't even concern you a little bit. You're not interested in hat. You're interested in placement of a gold note, adjustment of the gold note to other gold notes. And eventually you'll be interested in setting up that location by this effect right here, right? So that's our, that's our little world, right? It's values, lightest light to darkest dark, and, and color. So the redness of this establishes your reds, right? It's the richest of the dark reds, for sure. And, um, and uh, you have this blue world, this to this to this to this. This is us. This is us. This is who's talking to you. And the most neutral of those blue to green kinds of things sitting out here, very, very dark versions of it back in through here. Uh, but we're collating those sorts of things. You can see that there's a red here that plays off here and a version of red here, here, and here. These are those things that we're beginning to collate, where data we're setting down, we're setting it on the canvas and beginning to work with it. But that's the stuff of the visual person's eye. We're not drawing objects and coloring them in, which, by the way, Paxson may very well have done. His start actually shows that he knows how to do it without laying in very much, without being particular about all that stuff. But a lot of people will block a few lines around, throw a few lines around to block out the major masses. Uh, before proceeding here, I found it to always be an inhibition to real pure, uh, and I, you know, I mean, the keeping, keeping the purity of the play of the notes, for example. So again, here's the Vermeer, and uh, if you were to, if you had this, uh, if you had this thing in front of you, you would be able to recognize right away. And by the way, this one's pretty inky looking. Um, but you'd notice right away that this is the most chromatic color in the picture and that this is a warmed up version of it. You could call it a pink, but it's moving just out of the yellows by that distance. But you can see the yellows. This is a yellow family area here. This is a yellow family area. You begin to see these things. That's the stuff we think about. And we're setting up these notes in a picture, begin to move with them. Uh, we're setting up lightest light. Uh, we're setting up the uh, most significant areas, right? And some of that significance is a placement significance and other is lightest light significance, but there's everything has significance um, that you're using at the top end. Anything that you can't see, anything that's lesser or minor, uh, you have to be able to separate that as being um, something that we can somehow or other unify with the general impression and then walk away. But that's the thinking that goes around this. It's not, we don't see a girl there. We see a, a blob of, of a pinkier note here. And, I, you know, and you might, and by the way, there's nothing to stop you from seeing the feeling of form, the great form, the great feeling of this. And the great feeling of this is an egg. The feeling of this is a flatness. But that's our world, right? There's no point we're talking about how to draw the chair, how to draw the girl, how to draw the hands. None of that goes. Okay. So this might be, these, these two here might be reasonable examples of um, ways to think, how our starts look. So you, that indicates how we're really thinking about it. Again, this one here rather resembles a constable, doesn't it? You see a lot of marks. They're all blobs of value, right? In this case, very thoughtful color values. 
and uh, and there's an element of drawing, but it's very limited to major effects, right? So here's something like this thing. He's found that to be a major, some of great value, significance. And that's true of this thing over here as well, and this thing up here, and this thing over here. These are the high contrast, come to your eye first kinds of areas. And uh, other areas are lost, other areas are drifting, right? And so the general impression, when you blur your eye looking at the hole, you'll see that certain areas can be said to drift, to take a, walk, take a hike. And we don't work on those, they're minor areas. But in the meantime, we're getting this color note right to this one, right? And all the, any of the sort of the pink to purples right to each other. We're noting the, that this is the most intense of all the reds, this is the most intense of all the blues. Uh, you could argue that that is, in a certain way, the most intense of all the reds. In fact, th it's very confusing sometimes to understand the relative lightness of something and what the role it plays in making it appear in, uh, uh, like an intense color, like a saturated color. But you can see that a note like the ear and this mass here is going to relate to this note down here. If you're watching, and we have this sort of mentality of um, when you have a note in your hand, look around to see where else you can set it. Uh, very much uh, in the family of the color chase uh, uh, as part of the start, as part of the, as part of the uh, setup. But yeah, so you can see that this isn't careful drawing of a figure, but it's very pointed articulation of key places. So that you can see the figure and, and even the movement of form, the great egg, you know, the form and the general impression that, that we put down there is. Form isn't non-existent. It's just form, though. It's not the form of girl. It's not. So, uh, but the general impression, by the time you get this far, and this is now the canvas is covered and it doesn't look like he did anything past just covering the canvas. But in this case here, you can actually feel the entire uh, 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 painting and feel the unity of that impression just, just right away. And, and, it's, and, and similarly with this one. So this guy is setting out these color notes out here in some places and playing these things off of and all these different yellow game things. He's hitting other notes, playing them off of each other. This is the more neutral family of notes and um, a different value family. Um, but he's, he's set up, here's his, here's his chief red possibly, uh, certainly setting it up to this red over here and any other red that's going on in the picture. Uh, anyway, it's a matter of collating those things. He's also paying attention to actually executing the look of nature at edges, so the exits, uh, for, to make exits, and that's pretty significant for him. And, but the most striking drawing in the picture, he's decided to, uh, the most, most aggressive and careful drawing, you could say is arguably in places like this or that. And that's because they're set up, they're set, they set up the entire framework of the picture. One of the things you have to be able to do with what we're talking about is be able to get a thing like this, right, to a thing like this, to a thing like this. I've mentioned all this to you before, but do you see how this isn't, do you follow how this isn't actual, this isn't tactile, this isn't real form. This is just color play, value play, size play of the units, the color value units, okay? And if you realize that the process, the entire approach we take is to collate those things, to set them out and look at them, you'll begin to see how we relate to the whole world of the tonalist and to the, uh, and to the impressionist going forward as we spoke about last week in the Constable video. So... Um, I'm not, sure I, I'm not sure I got where I wanted to go in this, but that gets you a, a start on how we think. And, um, and uh, I hope you can uh, realize that when you're looking at a painting like this, this isn't realism 101, how to draw the girl, how to draw the shirt. If you can remember what we're doing here is collating color data, visual data, and getting sizes and play. By the way, even shapes. See this little shape right here? When you really want to know what that shape is doing, you'll want to know, you'll notice other ones in the room that have a correlation, have a relationship with it. And, but that's just shape correlations, right? You could even argue there's a size correlation, obviously, between two things that are rather like in a certain way, right? <laughs> Nothing more than the wobble of that blob. But each time you're doing anything, we're looking around and correlating, collating. So when you're trying to get this light effect here, you're immediately looking at the light effect here and here, and you keep this up, right? You just keep this up, keep collating data. And as you do it, you're gonna see things you never could have seen before, like the beauty of the relationship of the size of this and the distance from here, from there to here, to here, to here, or even just talking about these three. When, when an artist has seen these things, you can tell because they're beautiful. That's spotting. That's the placement of these spots that are of like elements in relation to each other. And you're gonna see beauty in these things as you're going along, if the ensemble that you're looking at is beautiful. 
So don't underestimate it. It applies to every single thing. It applies to a, to a curve. There's a world of curves out there. It applies to a gold. There's a world of golds out there all ready to be, to be toyed with. Uh, I was just picking up on that gold there. That's pretty neat. And of course, these ideas of gold, all of which are different values from each other, but they're all uh, uh, in, in the order of the golds, right? So, yeah. And it's, at, at every, when you look at a thing like this, at ever, as, as you, and as you know that you're going to bring this to a point of actual, uh, a, a more highly evolved, what Gamble would call pushing through toward more, represent, more realism, uh, you'll take areas like this here and you'll still do the same thing. You go and collate the data inside here, some of which you would have left out in the start, like the starts I showed you, and you'll begin to collate the data in smaller areas. And that's what the game will be, the same thing, just color to color, value to value, and aligned right and sized right to each other. So, and, and with effects and edges all related. Well, that's the summary statement. So I'm afraid I'm going deeper and deeper and not necessarily bringing anybody with me. So. Um, further, further comments, questions, and that sort of thing. Please do uh, uh, bring them to me, and uh, and uh, please subscribe, share, and uh, donate, and all those things. Whatever else I've forgotten. And uh, thank you for being there. See you next time.